Good evening, brewers. Had a box turn up today. Inkbird have sent me one of their ITC 308s to review. So, just going to open it up with you guys so you can see exactly what you get. Now, I'll be honest, I've been recommending these things for quite some time. Um, I've got STCs and things like that that I use. But for simple plug and play, and if you don't know much about electronics, these are great. So what you get in the box, you get a 12 month warranty card. Uh, da -da -da, so send them an email with your details. And they'll, and, uh, they'll give you info, some destructions, let's be honest. Do any of us read them? And um, the unit. So this is the ITC 308. Inkbird actually do a wide range of different temperature controls. So it's important to make sure you find the right one. Because if you just go and pick any Inkbird, you can end up with the wrong thing. So this one is a two stage, so it does heating and cooling. And you just set your temperature. If it gets too cold, it will turn the heater on. So whatever you plug in there, in my case, that's gonna be a tube heater. If it gets too hot, cause the yeasties are really kicking off, it will turn on whatever you got in cooling. So that will be the fridge got yourself a waterproof sensor and a plug it is all done for you all ready to plug and play that's the main advantage this has over the STC where you can do if you want to build yourself an STC um, here's a non STC that's a single stage but it shows you what you can do you can do that sort of thing but to be honest by the time you have bought yourself a project box all the um, wires terminal blocks everything like that to make it look tidy and then the time you spend on it it's probably cost you as much as one of these which you have to be honest looks a lot tidier um, so yeah I'm gonna go Plug this into my fermenting fridge, prepared in the mess in the garage. Over there, I don't know if you can see it, but on the shelf there is a two-stage STC 1000. So that is currently controlling the fermenting fridge in the corner, which has a mangrove jack kit in it. So we're going to plug this in in its place, and I'll come back to you. So there we are, hopefully you can see. I've literally just plugged it in. I haven't done anything else yet. So what we want to do, temperature probe. I've just taken out the one from the STC. It's a plastic bucket. I haven't got a thermo well. It just lives down there, tight against the bucket with just that bit of uh, beer mat towel. Um, to keep it insulated because I want to make sure I'm reading the fluid temperature in the ferment and not the air temperature around it. So I can shut that back up now. Actually, I'll do that after. Right, so what I need to do now, plug in heating, which is that tube heater that you can see just at the bottom there. So that's a 60 watt tool station tube heater, which provides all the heating I need, even in this unheated garage in the middle of winter. Cooling, plug in the fridge. Right, bear with me, just move you a little. Shut that up and bring you up here. Right, so let's see, set. Now 
Now, this is where I probably should read the manual. And I will do, I'll save you all having to do that. I'll read the manual for you, let you know any hints or tricks afterwards. 25C is flashing. You'll notice it does it in decimals as well. It's not whole digits like some of the cheaper STCs are. So this one we want set for 20 degrees. So you can set alarm temperatures. Set temperature differentials. It's all there. Hold set. There you go. That's how you do it. So you can see that currently it is telling me the temperature is 17.9 C. The set temperature is 20. And it is heating at the moment. So the tube heater is on. It's going to bring it back up to 20 C. And then it's going to shut off. So I'll pop that down there. Out of the way for now. And I'll sort about getting it sort out getting it hung up somewhere nice in the morning when it's light and a bit warmer out here. Just back to make a quick change on the ink bird. I've noticed looking at the charts, the tilt's producing, that the temperature's dropping a little bit too low for my personal taste before the heater clicks on. And that's simple enough to change. That's what's known as the heating differential in the system. So all, to change that, all we have to do, hold set for three seconds. Okay, TS is the set temperature. We don't want that one. Heating differential. So this one, I want it to come on if the temperature drops more than one degree C from what's set. So it's set for 20. That means if it gets as low as 19, then the heating will click on. Um, I didn't, let me do that again, because if you wait 10 seconds, like I did when I was checking to you, it forgets any changes you made and doesn't save them. So set for three seconds, heating differential, down to one C, hold set for three seconds. So that's changed now. So the cooling differential is still set to 2 to C. Heating differential is now set to 1 C. So what that means, if it gets as low as 19, the heater will click on. If it gets as high as 22, then the fridge will kick on. OK, the other thing to note, uh, I've just seen it in the camera. You can see this display flickering. That's only in the camera. Um, in real life, you don't see that. It's just where the displays are multiplexed. If you're a technical person, the power flickers along, lighting it up in sequence. And the shutter on the camera is fast enough to pick that up. It looks totally stable to the human eye. So there you go. A couple of quick changes to the Inkbird. So here it is. I've been using the Inkbird about a week, and I'll be honest, I'm very impressed. It's done the job lovely it's kept the temperature within one degree Fahrenheit now I say within one degree Fahrenheit because that is what the tilt inside the fermenter measures and I know it hasn't once I tweak the settings a bit I know it hasn't gone outside of that one degree Fahrenheit yeah I highly recommend them the ink birds already pre-built and tested and everything so you don't need any electrical knowledge to put it together safely if you've already got that and you want to build something yourself as a project then Inkbird do actually sell an STC style controller that you can fit in your own project case. They also sell a PID controller which looks like um, which looks basically the same as the Cestos D1S which is a well respected PID it's one I've used personally for years in a rims tube to control that. So you can still use Inkberg products even if you want to turn around and build something yourself. But I still say you've got to go quite a way to beat this pre-built thing. It's all nice, tidy, pre-built, 
looks decent on the shelf or on whatever you're using and it's very easy to control so what did I do to tweak it well I wanted this fermentation to happen they say 20 degrees C so I set it for 20 C and the default heating differential that it comes with is 2 degrees C so it starts to drop under 20 degrees C and then it would get down to like 19 degrees C then the heater would kick in and it would go back up above 20 again that wasn't what I wanted because it was dropping too cold so I changed it and I set it to uh, the set temperature as you can see is 20.5 and I changed the heating differential to half a degree so what happens now if it drops to 20 the heater kicks in to get it back up to 20.5 again and you can see from this chart from the tilt that it's done a very good job after the change of maintaining that temperature in the fermentation so Inkbird 308 gets a big thumbs up from me I'll put a link down in the description where you can get it if you're using one let us know what you think uh, if you're using the PID which isn't pre-built it's just a temperature controller all on its own that you have to build yourself or the STC style controller that you also have to build yourself let me know what you think if you've used both how do they compare thanks ever so much to Inkbird for sending me this to try like I say it was sent to me but they haven't told me what I've got to say I haven't found any downsides with it apart from possibly the cost if you're very cost conscious then you can get uh, the normal STC or Inkbird badged STC style controller for around 12 quid and then bodge it into a sandwich box chop up some old leads you've got and do it a bit cheaper but for a quality product that's all pre-built and looks this good and that does the job this well I'll, I won't be buying any more STC's I'll personally be buying these myself alright thanks ever so much catch you again soon